Hello again, I'm Svatya. Did you sleep well? One hour more? Fine. No? Some pub yesterday? Fine. So let's start. Uh, we'll speak how to save your time by using this monorepo approach. And first let me explain how did we get into this. So I work for Shopsys. We develop Shopsys framework. It's an open source platform for building online stores. And it's not just framework. If you install it, you have immediately full featured op uh, online store. And thanks to this, it's quite big. And the project itself is quite big. And we started with Monolith. I personally think that there is nothing wrong with Monolith to start with. And as we evolved, we found that we can separate something. So we started with smoke tests. Uh, smoke tests are tool for testing your controllers. If they return 200 and everything is fine. Uh, then we separated, separated coding standards because we want to keep our code maintainable. So we have standards for our code and so on and so on. And we ended up with 14 repositories, 14 repositories that are dependent on each other. And is here anyone who have to maintain multiple repositories? Great. Uh, are these repositories uh, connected somehow? Maybe. Yes. It's fun, right? <laughs> okay, so we also have this scenario and uh, we have or we had a couple of problems. Let's say first problem, if you want to make changes in all repositories. It was exactly my task. Um, we needed to add simple line to readmes to, into all readmes. If you have any problem, contact us on Slack and link. So what did I have to do? I had to clone all repositories, so 14 times, do this change, commit it 14 times, do 14 feature branches, push it, then create 14 pull requests, and then happily send it to code review. Because in Shopsys, we do code review for everything, every all I work. We also test it and business validate it, and only then it's merged into master. So happily, I send it uh, to code review. And the reviewer told me, you have a typo. <laughs> Uh, it was true, I had a typo there, so I had to do 14 fixes in 14 folders, 14 same commits, 14 pushes, and I send, sent it him back, mm, please could you review it again? So he did. So this was the first problem that we had. Another problem, if you have dependent packages and you want to change API of one of these packages. Let's illustrate it. We have our smoke tests and all our packages depends on coding standards. So we have coding standards everywhere the same. The same. So we have tool and we are using this tool externally and we want to change this tool somehow, add parameter, remove parameter, something. So what do we do? We change the tool and we also change the place where the tool is used. Okay, now we have to do two pull requests and code review is quite difficult because you have two separated pull requests and something, what is done here, is used here. It's not so easy task to review. 
And once the code review is done, you can continue to testing business validation and happily you can merge it. But first you have to merge coding standards and lighter smoke tests. No vice versa, otherwise it won't work. So yes, you did it. And then you realize that you had another repository that was using coding standards. Yes. Not the best situation. Another example, what we want to do is to do some experiments. We have dependent packages and I want to try something. I don't know if it will work. Maybe I will throw it away if it doesn't make sense. I just want to do an experiment. So let's go back to our dependent packages. At first, I need to do the experiment in the independent package. What then? I want to use it in smoke tests. Uh, but at first, I have to do experimental branch of this coding standards, deploy it, deploy it as a feature testing experimental something without code review, of course. Then I have to change this dependency to the dev dependency. And finally, I can try the experiment happily. And what do I usually realize that I had you or I made some problem. Maybe I'm missing parameter. Maybe it doesn't work as I intended. Um, so I have to go to the original package, make change, make the experimental deployment again and try it again. And this is, this is exhausting. Another problem that we face when we have dependent packages and they have the same external dependency. Let's illustrate it. We have smoke tests that depends on coding standards and they both depends on Symfony Finder in some old version. Because the dependency is common, it can work. And what we want to do, we want to upgrade this dependency at least to three, maybe to version four. So let's do it. Of course, we know that at first we need to update this dependency. We make some changes in coding standards and this simply doesn't work because now we have conflict. You, you cannot work in this fashion. So let's go back. I want to upgrade this dependency, this coding standards and tests. But at first, I have to update it in coding standards and release a new version of coding standards. Now it can go through code review, through test, through business validation. And on business validation, my product owner asks me, why did you just did it only in one package? Why isn't it in all packages? You know, because of dependencies. OK. so. This takes time, but finally, coding standards are released in new version. And then we can update the rest of dependencies. It takes time. It takes time. And it's not the way we want to work. So is there a solution for this? Well, yes, there is a solution. There is a solution and it's just using one repository instead of multiple repositories. And this is not a new idea. These companies use this approach and it makes sense for them. So what is it? We start with repositories. Well, at as much as you want, we have 14 of them. And we want only one single repository, sim single repository called Monorepo. We want these Git repositories inside this one Git repository. But it's not possible. You cannot have 
repository inside of Git repository. So how to deal with it? Instead of repositories, we can use folders. And now we move files from our original repositories into subfolders for every repository. So we end up with one repository that contains all the code. And this process is called build. You do it only once, and then you use monorepo. OK, so you have your monorepo. You can make changes there, and but you still want your original repositories. You don't want to say uh, your users uh, now use this monorepo. You want to stay. Uh, you want to still allow them to use these small repositories as they used to. And you also want to approach that files are still in the original structure, that there is no strange substructure. Simply, you want to do this. And this process we call split. We split the original repository into multiple repositories. And if there is anything important in this talk, this slide is the important one. If you use this approach, you will forever work only in your monorepo. You will do all changes in your monorepo. You will do all pull requests there. You will do all testing, business validation, and so on. And then, once the code is in master, you have automatic tool that splits this monorepo into your packages. But be careful. You can never touch these packages by any code, by any commit, by any pull request. Mm, you have to always use your monorepo first and then split it. And th then it could work. So this is the only important thing. OK, so how it solves our problems? We had a problem. We wanted to update 14 readmes. So how to do it in one repository? Well, it's simple. It's as simple as that. You just update 14 files. You make one commit, one pull request, of course, one feature branch. It's still in monorepo. You send it to code review, and your colleague will tell you, you have a typo there. OK, I will fix it everywhere. I will just search and replace it. Then do one fix, one commit again, push it, and then he can review it again. And that's it. As you can see, we saved some time. And after this is done, then you have all your new code in monorepo. You call your split process that splits this change into all your repositories at once. OK, so it was first problem, and now we don't have it. That's nice. Let's take a look on second problem. When you have dependent packages and you want to change API, how does it look in monorepo? Uh, this dependency is only internal because you have all your code at one place, so there is no need to download it externally. You have everything at, at one place. And now, if I want to change an API of tool, I can do it, and I can also change the dependency. I can do it in a couple of commits, it doesn't matter. In one branch, I will do only one pull request, not two separated pull requests, only one. And 
My colleague can do complete code review. He can go through, he can search for occurrences, and hopefully he will discover, hey, there's also another repository that was using this tool and now you broke API and it won't work. Okay, sorry, I made a mistake, I will just fix it. Okay, so you fix it, and then it can go to uh, tests, to business validation, and then you can merge it to master. And once you have this in master, you, also, you again call your split process, and you end up with your original repositories. And as you can see, these repositories have still the original dependencies, so the result is normal. What do you want? So we had another problem. We want to try something. And I think it will be boring now, because you all know that we work only in the repository, so you have internal dependency, and if you want to try it, you just make a new file, new class, it doesn't matter. You have experiment, because your dependency is internal, you can immediately use it. There is no need for experimental deployment and downloading, and immediately you can discover that um, there is missing parameter and maybe it doesn't make sense at all. So you can throw it away. Or if it makes sense, you can keep it there, send it to code review, reviewer have it, it in one pull request, he can check it, test it, and the deploy will be done at once. So again, we changed these two files, or edit these two files, and in one deployment process, it will be split into original repositories. They have correct dependencies, so everything is fine. Okay, and now let's have external dependencies. How it looks? We have our monorepo, it has internal dependencies, but each of these packages depend on the Symfony Finder. And But once it's all in one repository, you can change dependency for all packages. Maybe we will have to do some work because the Symfony Finder changed API, so you will do changes, maybe in a couple, in a couple of commits, but you will change it in one branch. And then you will just send, send it to code review, and once the process is complete, you merge it, and deploy it also at once. So you split it at once, and now you deploy all packages at once. So if someone depends on your smoke tests, smoke tests and, co and coding standards both have this new dependency, this new 3.0 dependency, so there is no option that it wouldn't work. So that's it. That's monorepo. Uh, monorepo solves our repetitive problems and it saved a lot of time. If you imagine all these scenarios that we have, and we already had them, so that's why I'm talking about them, it saved us a lot, a lot of time. So, if this use case is your use case, that you have multiple repositories that depend on each other, and you also code review it and face these problems, I think you should take a look on Monorepo, and maybe it will save you your time. And uh, we tried a couple of, couple of tools that already exist. Some of these tools were maybe complicated and we were not able to make them work. 
so we didn't try them. Some of them had only this splitting part, but it didn't suit uh, our use case because we have original repository repositories and we needed to make more repository, so we couldn't use them. And finally, there were some tools that worked, but they were horribly slow. In our code base, we have only 8,000 commits. It's nothing too, uh, nothing too, uh, too large. And this one tool we tried, I think it ran a couple of hours, maybe a whole day, and it's something we couldn't use because sometimes we merge into master a couple of times a day and it wouldn't suit for us. So we developed Shopsys Monorepo tools. It's a tool mm, that can build and also split your repository and it's quite fast. For our use case, when we have 8,000 commits, it takes about 15 minutes to split them into all repositories. Uh, so it's quite fast, but still, if you would have more commits and maybe more work, uh, there is some room for improvements because we run it on SSD disks and you still can use uh, temporary file system in uh, uh, memory, so it should be even faster. But 15 minutes is for us okay, so we didn't have to try it, or we didn't have need to try it yet. And this Shopsys Monorepo tools, we use it daily. Uh, as I said, it can split and build, and one cool feature it has it doesn't change commit hashes. So, when you had your original repositories, and or we had our original repositories, we moved them into monorepo, and then we split them. The result is exactly, exactly the same as the original repository. It has same amount of commits, it has same structure, and the commits have same hashes uh, because git uh, hashes are not anything random. It's deterministic, so if you have the same in input, it creates the same output. And this was important because we already were open source and our packages were used by users and if we had to force push after the split, our packages, uh, maybe they would run into some troubles. But we managed to make this tool quite, quite good, that it doesn't change original commits. And also this tool deals with git tags but it's just maybe just our workflow, mm, but also Symfony workflow, uh, that uh, all our packages are tagged by the same version. You can be sure that in this version all our packages cooperate well. And this tool, our, our Shopsys Monorepo tool, also can split tags. And there is one little issue, if you don't do any change from version to version in your repository, it will tag it by the new tag also, but it's just a little issue. Well, we have quite a lot of time. I thought that I will be slower. I didn't want to explain how this monorepo tool works internally because it's quite difficult to draw because we are working with git history and also with files and directory structure. So if you are interested in how it works, uh, just tell me and I will explain it later. And maybe what is, what is interesting uh, that I said that we have in monorepo, 
we have internal dependencies. And can you imagine how to do it, how to do internal dependencies? Because if you have external dependencies, you have in PHP your composer JSON and you just load them. And in monorepo, I will go a couple of slides back. Nope. Here, in monorepo, you have internal dependencies. Every folder has its composer JSON because it's, it will be splitted later at, and it has to be used. Uh, and it, in this whole monorepo, we have our own composer JSON that links everything together. Uh, there is defined that uh, classes of this namespace are in this folder, this namespace, this folder, and so on. So this is how we dealt with internal dependencies and it works quite well. Okay. I was, I was really fast. Thank you for attention. Um, as I said, if you have uh, these troubles, use monorepo tools. And also check this shopsys.com slash you slash mono. Uh, there are articles about monorepo tools, how to use it, and why to use it. So let's check it. So thank you. <laughs> and because we have a lot of time, I hope you have questions. Okay. Can you catch? Hello? Well, I guess this doesn't work. Doesn't work? Uh, oh, it does. Um, so I guess you've kind of answered my initial question that you've mentioned, like split tool takes 15 minutes to deploy. And my initial question was, uh, how do you handle those internal dependencies, which <laughs> you would have to deploy and wait until they're deployed then to include. But you answered that, that you have your own composer JSON. And I guess that handles that. Uh, so the other thing is uh, you probably use only one vendor folder for all the dependencies or does each project has uh, its own vendor folder with installed uh, dependencies? In uh, Monorepo, Monorepo has its own vendor dependencies. So if you develop in Monorepo, you have your composer JSON, you have to name dependencies of all your packages and then you have there one vendor. Okay, then is it possible for one package to use one version of some dependency and another package to use another version? This is not possible, okay. but if you have this scenario, the packages cannot depend on each other. If one package uses Finder mm -hmm. version 2 and other package uses Finder version 2, you cannot depend on each other. So it doesn't make sense to put them together into one, uh, okay. one, one repository. And then the question was, what kind of development machines you use? Because I would imagine PHP Storm with file indexing and everything probably going bonkers with memory. We, we use PHP Storm. Yeah, so the, and it handles all the file indexing from Monorepo for all the projects. Like yes, that. yes, yes, it does. Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, we use it for developing framework. So our libraries are sort of small. I don't know if it's a good idea if you have like 10, 20, 100 projects for your customers to put everything into one monorepo, because then you will run into these issues with your IDE, and maybe the split will be also slow, but it's not our case. I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense or not right now. It's fine. The question is still with like microservices where everything's connected, not like different, different, mm -hmm. different projects. So, yes. yes. Thank you. There's a question in back. Maybe from two people, if you could help. <laughs> uh, hey. 
which would be the downsides that you not necessarily encounter but thought of like like example if you want to upgrade a version of the framework you'll have to change and adapt all your applications you can do it one by one i think if you're using a monorepo yes that's our approach that what we want to do okay so it's something that they actually want not a drawback or something Uh, sorry, sorry, I so it's something that you actually want, it's not something that is slowing you down, for example, because you can't migrate server by server or app by app, you have to do them all at once, so your project, your upgrade project will become big. Mm, I'm not sure if I understand what you are asking. You want uh -huh. to upgrade Symfony version, for example, mm -hmm. which upgrades the dependencies, which mm -hmm. means you have to upgrade all your apps at once for the yes, monorepo. Yes, but we don't have apps, we have libraries. Or libraries. Yes, 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 and now I understand because I, I was wondering if you are talking about projects or libraries. Yes, you have to do it. Yes, you have to do it. And we are not in this situation, but I can imagine that right now Shopsys is in version 7, and later we will release version 8. And I can imagine that in version 7 we will still support bug fixes. And I was wondering with this monorepo approach, is it, is it even possible to go back and do some bug fixes? But it is. You can, because your whole pro project is in one version, you can go back to version 7, develop something, or Mm, increase your dependencies versions, uh, commit it, and then there is seven point something something bug fix. So, but we don't do it, and but it is possible. Thanks. Hey guys, I Hello. Think you can hear me. My question is uh, uh, in the black part. Okay. Everybody can hear me now? Okay, I'm like, good. Hey. <laughs> Coming back to the question. Uh, how do you guys handle reverts? You know, it happens. You have a package and you have to revert it. And how does this affect the labeling part? Because oh, you what? have to push some tags for each and every dependency. And when you create the revert, how will you guys handle the new tag push? Well, we wouldn't mm, handle it. We would release a new version. Well, we didn't run into this issue yet, but I think it's a good idea to release a new version that fixes the problems with it and then uh, remove this wrong version from packages and so no one can install it. Did I answer? Okay, sort of. Sort of? Uh, maybe you can explain. <coughs> so when you put something to production and it doesn't fit the, actually the business needs or it was just an experimental branch or you know package, that means you should revert that. I mean, I think you guys also use the, the revert functionality from Git, no? Uh, what functionality? The revert. Um, we, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we had to revert something. I don't think so, that okay, we had this issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone? But uh, also we have, uh, as we have this process, we have continuous integration and delivery, something that checks that our framework works as it used to work in last version. So we didn't run into this trouble yet that we would release a version. We had some troubles in master, and we just fix it. And these are new commits. It's master. It's not so big deal. Huh? Uh, you told in previous pr question that uh, you have one vendor uh, deal. In, in the monorepo, yes. yes. So uh, how do you check if uh, the single library uh, will not make, for example, uh, circular dependencies? Circular dependency? Um, we, that we would have dependencies between our own packages. Yes, 
And you can make the circular dependency. Yes, you can. Wow. <laughs> Did you check uh, if, if it is? Or no, no, no. We don't check this. Uh, but one thing that comes from this question is that you we have dependencies in all our packages and uh, dependency in monorepo have to be i guess it's intersection of all these dependencies and still we manage these dependencies manually in monorepo so so for example if one library use for example symphony finder and the second library didn't use it uh, if you split the second one, you also depend on Symphony Finder? Uh, this split it doesn't depend on Symphony Finder, but Monorepo have to depend on Symphony Finder because at least one package uses this dependency, so Monorepo have to depend on this. Uh, so the composer package, composer JSON after the split are uh, ch changed for all packages? For uh, all libraries, you, you yes, yes, yes. You have to also change the monorepo composer JSON if you upgrade something. Okay. And we still do this manually, so there is possibility uh, that we you, you can make the mistake. Yes, we can. We can do mistakes, and actually, we already did some mistakes. So we just pay attention that we we are checking these things during code review. Just we, manually. Sorry. Manually? Manually, yes. Okay. Uh, we tried one tool. Uh, it was some composer tool for merging composer JSONs. It was supposed to merge any number of composer JSONs into one. So it was exactly our use case. But it didn't work. And I don't remember for what reason. Maybe in one year we will try it again uh, because this manual check um, can, can, can cause problems and can cause, cause errors. And also, if you have in one package dependency on Symfony 2, uh, I'm just wondering if there can be this issue that one package will, be, will depend on Symfony 2, one on Symfony 3, and we don't change it in monorepo, then tests should fail. So this is kind of okay. This is this is kind of okay. So uh, when you make the test, you take the uh, one library, extract it, and then test? Or you test it with this one vendor there? When we run... You, you can make <laughs> just the dependency on the package which is not uh, included in Composer JSON in this mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, When we test it, uh, when we run tests in uh, Monorepo locally, uh, we use this one big uh, Composer, let's say Composer vendor. And uh, yes, if we forget to add dependency into particular package, and we use it, this dependency, tests will pass, everything will be okay, it will go to split, so the, and after uh, split it will the uh, yes, yes, it, it will just go out, uh, it will go to master, and we have also uh, checks after the split, after deployment um, by Travis, and Travis will tell us, I cannot use this class because it doesn't exist. Yes, it can happen. It doesn't happen usually, or it, it's not common that this will happen. And still, it's master. It's not versioned by tag, so we can still fix it. Nobody should use our um, dev master. Dev master. Okay. But yes, yes, this, this is an issue. We tried to solve it by Composer uh, merge tool, but we were not successful. And we also tried uh, requirement checker, uh, also for, for Composer, because packages can have uh, dependencies that exclude each other. And this requirement checker should tell us we spent, I don't know, maybe 20 hours of on that, and it didn't work properly, so we just Love it. Let it be. Okay. Thanks for the question. 
there's someone in back. Uh, is it uh, possible to uh, build monorepo with repositories uh, that have different standards? Uh, for example, PSR, or, or if we have a legacy pro project and we have it, uh, want to have it in the monorepo, let's say, before uh, refactoring it? Well, it should be possible. Okay. It, it should be possible. Uh, what more? Uh, Still, these questions, all this talk can be in JavaScript or maybe other languages. Uh, uh, mon uh, the idea of monorepo uh, isn't related to any language, so you can even have multiple languages in one monorepo and deal with dependencies. So definitely, definitely putting legacy could make sense. Maybe you will run into unknown issues. Yes, maybe. Okay. Hi, thanks for the talk. Hey? Uh, I'm wondering this uh, monorepo thing, uh, it seems to me like an uh, anti-pattern for Git, because I don't think so that Git want to do this uh, splitting part. Because um, if you know subversion, subversion basically work like this. You have one big repo and folders are your uh, small uh, sub-projects, sub-repositories. So uh, should it be possible to um, get rid of this splitting part? Uh, I just uh, will have mono repo mm -hmm. and I will um, separate my code by folders and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't understand it. You will, uh, you will not split it, and yeah. you will use only monorepo as a dependency. Yes. Am I right? I think this is approach that uh, AWS, uh, Ama Amazon, let's say, is using for their PHP libraries. That if you if you want use only S3 service, you have to download support for all libraries. So I think uh, Amazon is using this approach that they have only one repository and everybody have to depend on this repository. It is valid. Okay. okay, more questions? So maybe we... Ah, it's fine, it was 45 minutes. Ah, there is a question. Be careful. Was it headshot? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. try it again. Um, how do you handle the deployment? Um, because as you said, yeah, you split the libraries. Do you deploy on uh, pushes to the split library, or do you have some script that parses, I don't know, git heads to check whether uh, which project was actually updated and deploy that, or just deploy everything? Uh, we just deploy everything because uh, uh, during the split process mm, on machine it has this repository locally. It splits it into directory uh, that has Git and everything, and it just calls Git push. And if there's nothing to push, Git push will do nothing. So your deployment process is pulling or um, maybe I misunderstand like I, I would imagine that if you deploy you have a script that checks which libraries would be updated and then fires the deployment process for that or do you even use docker or oh well we are developing library so we are developing ah. only source code we don't have production or s application nothing nothing that runs so uh, we don't have these issues we only separate the code and push it. And that's our deployment process. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, w uh, would you have, uh, how would you imagine the deployment if it was actually microservices? If you have microservices in Monorepo and you want to deploy them. Yes, and they all depend on one another. Well, I think it's manageable. Uh, I, 
I don't like uh, me personally. I don't like working with Docker microservices and orchestration. Even Shopsys does it in past months a lot. I don't like it, so I'm not the right person to answer if deploying microservices in this style is okay. It should be, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Anyone? So thank you again. Thank you for wonderful questions. And yeah, thank you. <laughs>